The first three game losing streak for the Dallas Cowboys since 2020 comes to fruition as they fall on the road 27 21 the final score against the Atlanta Falcons. The Cowboys now at three and five equaling their loss column over the last three seasons under Mike McCarthy finished 12 and five in both 2021 2022 and 2023 and now they fall to a three and five record overall here with Barry Church Isaiah Stanback Nate Newton I'm Kyle Yeomans this one not only a loss but a costly one because mm. you don't know the extent of the injury around Dak Prescott you don't know how long CD Lamb even though he toughed it out in the end and was still available all the way up into that final play offensively for the Cowboys you don't know what the extent of his injury is uh, where do we start with a loss like this? It, it just it was another one of those things where things were out of sort and the Cowboys just couldn't piece it together in order to get a win on the road. Well, I'm going to start on the defensive side of the football, you know, as I always do. And defensively, I was actually pleased with what I saw from their rush defense. I mean, they held Atlanta to 100 yards even on the ground, which to me for the Dallas Cowboys defense, that is a step in the right direction. But when you talk about the secondary, there was a lot of communication issues, a lot of alignment issues that we saw from this secondary, which allowed big time plays. If you look at Kirk Cousins, three touchdown passes that he was able to throw out there just today, they were all because of the alignment issues and being held on rub routes. You got to communicate while you're in the secondary. It happened twice. The first one on digs with, with um, Drake London, you were to be able to play off on that to fight through the traffic. The second one, it was another three by one set. All three defenders were on the same line of scrimmage. That gives you no room to be able to fight through the pickets, and they were able to score another big time touchdown. The last one to Ray McLeod is another one where the defense dropped the guy wide open out there, and those explosive plays cannot happen for a defense that's struggling. You got to be able to perform at the top of your level, and this defense has not been able to do so. And when you look at the opposite side of the football, to me, it comes down to decision making. I mean, when you look at it, those fourth downs, Early in the first half, when you look at it, fourth and one, you got to go north and south. You got to give your offense an opportunity. They decided to do the jet sweep east and west of CD Lamb. The Falcons read it perfectly, made a great play, and then the fake punt. I, I just, to me, I just, I just don't understand that. If you're going to go forward on fourth and two, give your team a chance, leave your offense out there. You're not catching anybody by surprise out here these days. You got to give your team a chance, and those decision making, making just didn't pan out for the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, I'm going to stay on the offensive side of the ball since my boy DCBC hit defense. Uh, offensively, they just didn't take advantage of their opportunities. Um, they didn't convert. Uh, you talk about third down, let's look at third down. Third down, they were 23% on third down. Not going to get it done. Fourth down, 20% on fourth down. Mm. One for five. Not going to get it done. Uh, drop passes, right? Obviously, the, the issue went down with, with Dak Prescott where he had to step out the game. Cooper Rush came in and did a heck of a job giving this offense opportunities. Drop passes, missed opportunities in terms of yak yardage, yards after catch. Um, he gave them opportunities to go out there and make some big plays, and guys just didn't do so. So uh, you talked about the, the fourth down call by Coach McCarthy. Uh, outside of that, I think he called a relatively, really, relatively uh, good game. Honestly, I think he, he has some opportunities out there. Players just didn't make the plays. Um, that was definitely a head scratcher in terms of him going on the fly sweep and not getting that on fourth down. Obviously, the, the fake punt was just terrible. I feel like whatever play call was in there, obviously we saw that, that failed execution of that. Um, the, there's always somebody on the offensive side of the ball in terms of punt team that usually has the power to call that play off if you don't get the look that you want to get. Obviously, that didn't happen. You know, when you when you start the game, I was saying they needed to run the ball a little uh, more effective. But hey, Coach McCarter threw us a curveball. He thought throwing the ball, short passes, wheel routes out of the backfield, uh, uh, swing passes out of the backfield. Mm -hmm. Guys were being uh, very uh, prosperous in that way. But as the game went on, we fell apart. Holding here, offside there, uh, just penalties killed. It was nine for fifty-five. Not a lot of yardage. It's just when that happened. Mm -hmm. You know, second, we, 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 we'd be in second and three, uh, second and four, all of a sudden now we're in third and eight, third right. and nine. You can't have that. This team is not good enough to do that. And, and we've talked about the fake punt enough, so that's a no-no. Somebody should have been smart enough to call that off. Yeah. Well, you talk about those penalties, there's nine penalties for 55. Yeah. Right. And it's not even just the fact that you had nine penalties, it's when those penalties happen. Yes. And we talk about the young fella, Tyler Guyton, and the things that he struggled with this year in terms of his blocking. Penalties is right up there right now, right there for him. So um, there's a lot that he has to clean up, um, not only just in his technique, but honestly in just the mental um, toughness and in and just the discipline up front. He's, he, when he's having these penalties, it's really hurting his team. Yeah, no doubt about that. And whenever you look at the different elements throughout the five losses 
this year for the Cowboys. It hasn't just been one thing. Now, there have been some reoccurring things like the run defense and lack of uh, execution offensively, lack of separation from wide receivers, but it hasn't ever been just one thing. Today, decision-making, yeah. execution, both of those things kind of go hand-in-hand. Hand. Uh, where did you point your finger that's the number one problem right now for the Cowboys because right now I'm looking at this as saying since there are so many things, yeah. since there are these 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 back and forth reasons, this just not, might not be a very good football team. And, and that might be the case. It might just be the Carpenter doesn't have his tools to be able to get the job done. When you look at it defensively, you know, Zimmer came in as a defensive coordinator. He's used to having those big bodies up front, those guys that can, you know, hold up blockers to let his linebackers go sideline to sideline. We've seen so far this season that that's just not been the case, and that's been a reoccurring issue when you talk about the run game. Every team that has gone against the Dallas Cowboys has had success running the football. When you look at the defense, you got to be able to take one aspect away from the opposing team, whether it's stopping the run or being able to limit that in the pass. And to me, this this entire season, when you look at it, teams have had their way regardless. Do we want to run? Do we want to be balanced? Their quarterback has been upright and cool, calm, and collected the entire time this season. So to me, when you look at it defensively, you got to find a way to take one aspect away. You can't just let teams have it their way, both with the run and the pass. Surprisingly, the defense actually didn't do terrible. Yeah, that's today. okay. Yeah. Um, we talked about the need for turnovers and how this team defensively in the past years has been known for creating turnovers. These guys forced three fumbles, right? They took the ball, they only recovered one of those fumbles, but these guys had opportunities, right? And whether or not you take advantage, you jump on the ball, that's a whole nother deal. But in terms of solidifying tackles, I know during, during the broadcast we were watching the game, they seemed to tackle better. Um, they seemed to be punching the ball out better, right? So they were getting closer. When I say it, it's better than what we've seen on film so far this year. So that's a step in the right direction. Now, was it enough? Absolutely not. But these dudes allowed 310 yards. That's, that's night and day better than what we've been seeing. Prior to this game, they've been averaging 462 yards given up per game. Average. For, so to only give up 310 yards against a team that's loaded up offensively, that's a step in the right direction. But obviously, it just wasn't enough. The thing here is our offensive line. You would expect after seven or eight games that you would start seeing some cohesiveness. It's not happening. Mm. I mean, from your right tackle to your left tackle, guys are taking their turns about getting beat individually. That has to stop. I said it four weeks ago, and I said now your quarterback is starting to pay. That The dividends on this, your quarterback is starting to get hit after mm. almost every pass. He's getting rushed. He's getting thrown off his mark. Some, some way – Coach Solari got to find a way mm. to, to, to get these guys going. My left tackle, he's got to settle down and understand that everything in a panic situation, he's not setting up properly. He's not using his hands. He's leaning on everything. He's got to start to grow. He's mentally and physically has to start to grow. He come up with these uh, penalties. He find ways to find penalties. Our offensive line has to protect the quarterback and has to have some type of running game, and they have not matured at this point. First game of four straight against teams that are either in first place or mm. second place within their division. You've got Philadelphia next week at home, then Monday night football against Houston at home, and then you go on the road against Washington prior to the Thanksgiving break. I, 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 where do you go from here if you're the Cowboys? I mean, that's where <laughs> I'm at. You're at three and five. You've got three of your toughest games on your schedule coming up. I mean, I can understand the frustration from the fan base, from the coaching staff, from the players, because it's not going to get any easier where do you start if you're the Cowboys to try and turn this, this losing streak around, especially whenever it's only going to get tougher? With self. You know, I've been in this situation. I've been 1-15. I've been 3-13. and 13. I've been 7-8. and eight. Uh, It is ugly. It is hard. But you, 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 I don't look at Isaiah as a wide receiver, a church, as, as a uh, DB or you as our quarterback. I, I, I go to checking me. Mm. When I look at film, I'm not breaking down the whole team. I'm breaking down the guy that's over me, how this defense is structured, what this guy in front of me at different situations is going to do. You start looking at you. I, I'm not, I, I don't have time for him. I have to only have time to make sure I'm doing my job within the structure of this offense. Yeah, you, that's you it just, right there. You just heard the all pro multi <laughs> Super Bowl champ say it. That's accountability, right? Yeah. Everything he just said, he just summed up. Yeah, that's all accountability. And again, that's not pointing the fingers. That's not trying to find blame somewhere else. That's not trying to see who does not doing what, who's not calling the right place. What could I have done to do better? Right? It's just like my, my daughter. When my daughter or my son get done playing, they might be frustrated with their game on. No, no, no. Don't tell me about anybody else. 
What can you be doing to be better and help your team win ball games? And that's exactly what Nate just said. Yeah, they got summed it up perfectly. You got to look in the mirror, see how you can affect this team in a positive light, and go forward from there. There are nine games remaining. Nine. That's what you got. You got yeah, nine games left. That's a long time left, and you've got a three-game losing streak staring you in the face going up against your NFC East foe. It starts this week at AT&T Stadium, and you got to turn it around with yourself and with, of course, your own preparation. But they fall here in week nine, 27-21, the final score. We leave you with some of the final stats presented by Miller Lite. That does it for the first word. Presented by Dr. Pepper. We'll be back for Cowboys OT and Cowboys game night. Locker room reaction, film breakdown, and highlights. A whole lot more coming your way on DallasCowboys.com. For Barry Church, Isaiah Stanback, Nate Newton, I'm Kyle Yeomans. Thanks for watching.